Brian Terrian from the Disability Digest. You're about to listen to an inspirational disability approval story from Morellis in Florida. She was approved without being able to go to a doctor uh, because of the financial means. And there's many individuals out there that I've spoke to that have had a similar situation. So she uh, has two tips that she shares as to what was able to help her get approved. So I hope you find this helpful in pursuit of your disability benefits. For more tips, guidance, uh, help to get your benefits approved, uh, just look below the video. You can join us as a member. We have free resources like a relish used uh, to get approved. Um, So we invite you to come on in. Or if you're a member here, then just reply and reach out to us. We'll get an update on where you're at and see what we can do to help you. All right, enjoy be willing to contribute? Um, I don't know, because the other thing is that uh, what I did was um, when you sent me the letter for the doctors, I know that Dr. Beck wasn't going to send me, uh, he wasn't going to sign the paperwork. He said he would be willing to do it verbally on the phone, and then um, he said no papers. He wasn't touching any papers because of the COVID. So what I did was, I like a little spark went off and said, oh, so let's go to Dr. Bell, which she was my psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. And I went to Dr. Bell, and Dr. Bell, she says, well, there's a special letter that I'm supposed to fill out with it. And she said, it's on the Social Security page. Um, and uh, she said, uh, I could fill that out for you right now. And she's like, oh, my God. I was like, yes, please. And she filled out that paper. And she had given me a test before that, and she put that all in the information that she sent to the judge, and that's it. I mean, pretty much I was on the phone with the judge, and he was asking me what are my conditions and if I had any other worries, and I said, yes, I do. And and I went through a whole list of all the things that I'm going through and uh, all, the me- all the medication that I was taking and the things that I wasn't treated for. And uh, at the end, he said, okay, that's fine, and uh, that's it. I mean, because my attorney only asked one question, and that was like, are you concerned about any other uh, illnesses that are not being taken care of? And I said, yeah. I said, Mm -hmm. are you ready? Because, hello, here Mm -hmm. it comes. And I was like, I was like, Back to back, and I was like, you can't believe the pain that I go through because of my, um, I have to, uh, I forget what they call them, um, at the bottom of my feet, I have two, oh God, what do they call them things? Uh, I forget what I call them. And uh, I was telling him, it's like putting an iron thing up my, my foot, and it's like, so painful, it's like it just numb. I can't move. I have to stay still, and that happens to me when I'm walking. So I have to, I have to wait until it, it passes. The pain passes, and then I can, you know, continue to walk. Mm-hmm. But I was, mm-hmm. she was, it was like a little explanation for everything that I did, like my my ulcerative colitis. Um, I told them I keep bleeding. I bleed all the time. I never stop bleeding. And this is something that concerns me because um, the doctor at the hospital told me when my hemoglobin would come down, uh, that uh, that could be cancer. So I'm always watching out my, taking care of my hemoglobin and making sure that it's at a, a normal level and it hasn't come down and stuff, stuff like that. And that's what I talked to the a judge about. And he was very kind. He was a very kind judge. He was... Um, listening to everything that I said, and then he was, like, asking questions about the things that I said. So it was cool. I mean, it was. I wasn't expecting to have such a nice judge, but he was very nice. Well, that's good to hear. So, so you have an interesting situation that I have a question about. Typically, to get approved, there's general criteria, you have conditions, which you have. They're being treated by a doctor, which not all of yours were, and they have Mm -hmm. limitations. So the part in the middle, did the judge ask you why you were not being treated for those conditions? Yes, he did. 
And, and the, the thing is, was? I go to a clinic, and at the clinic they're limited on things that they can treat and not treat. And mm -hmm. basically what we have there is a lot of alcoholics and a lot of drug people, a lot of people who take the, the codeine and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they're in programs to to like rehab, mm -hmm. and then they 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 get uh, their own homes. They send them their, to their own apartments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten approved because um, I didn't apply for the apartment because I applied with uh, another company to get an apartment. Not a lower income, yeah, lower income company, and uh, not with uh, with them because Schultzbacher is a really good place, mm -hmm. but it's all about drugs and alcohol and things that people are addicted to, and they don't cheat. Like if they wanted to get a, um, oh, what do they call this? Uh, the test that you, a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to get a colonoscopy, I've been waiting for a colonoscopy for three years. Oh boy! So at this at Schultzbacher, they don't have the capacity. I mean, now they're they're accepting insurance, but they've never accepted insurance before. And um, the colonoscopy costs about five to six thousand dollars, which they can afford it. Mm -hmm. So they don't send me to get a, a colonoscopy. So now that you're approved and you'll have your Medicare soon, um, you'll be able to get these situations addressed. Oh, most well, definitely, because once I can get better. the colonoscopy done, oh, yeah. God, please, you know? Yeah. There's so many things they're not treating my heart condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're just giving me medications that the hospital gave me when I was there with the uh, heart attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what they continue to do. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. I think that is um, that is inspirational for people that are going to listen to this replay because they, you're not alone. There's people out there that when they lose their job, they you know they lose their insurance, they don't have a place to go get treated. But just the fact that you were going to a clinic satisfied that, um, which is great. So because there's clinics pretty much everywhere. Um, like that, so that's good. Yeah, I mean, this is a clinic basically for people who are uh, in drugs mm -hmm. and they want to come out of it, and people who are alcoholics, because you know they smoke like chimneys. Like so, like they take cigarettes treatment. or, or yes, weed or yes. yeah. Oh, they believe me, they do both. <laughs> 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 they do both. You mm -hmm. can smell it on them when you're sitting there, but um, like. Because they do these things, that's why they they concentrate on these things. They don't concentrate on like the heart condition or the spurs in my feet, which I just remembered. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't treat those things because they have no no way of getting you know like uh, a clinic or somewhere they can go to to take pictures of my feet. They can't mm -hmm. take X-rays there because they don't have X-ray machines. Mm -hmm. They they don't have a dermatologist, which I need because I have a condition on my skin. They don't have a dermatologist. They don't have, well, they have an eye doctor, which is like once a month, and if you're lucky, you get an appointment, and if you don't, you have to wait. Hmm. But, I mean, it's like, it's a clinic. It's not the personal doctor. Okay. That's well said. Not a personal doctor. No, it's not. Okay. I mean, when you go to your doctor, you can tell them, look, I'm aching over here, and this is killing me, whatever, and then he'll either send you for a test to prove that, you know, oh, well, um, Miss Slaytus has this, so let's treat it. So they, mm -hmm. you know, they take, they take, like right now I think I have Alzheimer's. So I have to get an x-ray and I have to get a test done with blood and stuff. And then that's not going to, they're not going to do this at Schultzbacher. Mm, no. I know they're not going to do it. And then the psychiatrist who's treating me, she tested me for it. And she says, well, you know, for being a second year in college, she, she says your vocabulary is very limited. And she said, you did really, well, you didn't do very good. She says, out of 30, you, you only got 24. And she was, like, really concerned. So she said, in six months, we're going to repeat this test. Okay. All right. So I'm keeping up with my doctor appointments at Schultzmacher. 
but you know now they changed it to those um, not real doctors that they're like nurses. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so okay. that's another thing that's going on, and it's not. I don't like it because I personally like going to see Doctor Beck. But Doctor Beck left, All right. and he went to U.S. So. Okay.